Bring them up. Here we go. History in the making. Green, green, green. Finally, finally, it's time for racing. Hi, this is Brett McMillan. You're listening to the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. With me this week, Kelly Crandall from Racer.com. As cliche as it sounds, and for as overused as it is, let me be among those to express how excited I am for a new season. And Jeff Hammond from Fox Sports. Well, are you ready? That's the question. Are you ready? I am. Let's get it done. It's the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters on the Performance Racing Network. Presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Your professional parts people. Now, here's your host, Brett McMillan. Pull those belts tight. Oh, wait, that's that other crew chief. That's that other guy. <laughs> <laughs> it is that time. We got cars in the track. Glad to have you guys here, Kelly and Jeff. And uh, yes, the long wait, it seems like forever. But when, you know, I guess when you start talking about the drivers and the crews this last couple of weeks, it, it probably hasn't been very long at all, has it, Kelly? No, I go back and forth. Sometimes it feels like it's been forever, and then there's other days where I wake up and I say, wait a minute, I'm not ready for this yet. You mean I have to pack again? Yeah. So. Oh, you got to pack again? I never unpack. <laughs> that's I mean, smart. Yeah. That's, that's the thing is you know pretty much what you need. You just replace it. You know, when, Once you take it out to go get it washed, put it right back in, and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I, all right, I guess that's a sign. I haven't really been doing that all that long. Yeah, I haven't but, picked that trick up. But the other thing, and, and a lot of us in a lot of different programs that I've been involved with during the off season, quote term off season, we haven't really had an off season. No, I mean this has been one of those years where everybody um, is in the news and there's something going on, whether it's a driver, a car owner, a team, a sponsor, you name it. And there's been a lot of changes. And in, in crew chiefs, man, they are at the top of the list as far as a lot of movers and shakers right now. Absolutely, and that's going to start to come into play starting this week. And we start with, they brought the name back. The Bush Clash is back in, you know, it's a small field, but do you like that race? Do you like having that way to start the season, Kelly? Uh, well, I do, but but I have always said that I'm a super Speedway fan, and I know some people aren't. So I enjoy going down there and having something on the track right away, something to watch, get back into the competitive nature, and – you know, I still like the fact that it's a race where, you know, with it being a small field, it really does feel like it's exclusive, as it should be. So, uh, I I don't know. I just I think it's a good way to kind of start the year, get everybody kind of slowly back into the swing of things, and then by, you know, a couple days later, then you're really going at it to make the, the Daytona 500. So, But, again, I'm a super Speedway fan, so if there's cars on track, I like it. <laughs> well, you, you've been a part of it, Jeff, many, many times over the years. Do you like starting the season that way? Let's, let's just go ahead and set the record straight. Not only have I been involved with it, I was involved in the first one. Okay. Way back when the Bush <laughs> Clash was, was conceived by Monty Roberts from Anheuser-Busch at that time in Bush Beer. They came up with the concept, and, and the field was even smaller then. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a good tune-up. I mean, I think it's like a lot of things during what we call Speed Weeks at Daytona. It kind of kicks everything off. You know, it kind of gets it going for the Cup Series gives them an opportunity to kind of knock some of the rust off and see exactly where everything is. It's not the official race, but it, but it's a good tune-up, and I, hopefully everybody will play nice and, and not start the week off on the wrong foot as far as destroying a bunch of race cars. But uh, it'll be yet to be seen. It'll be a good little test to see if the Chevrolets are going to be pretty good and exactly who do, who has been doing their homework you know, during the offseason. Well, it's funny you say, you know, don't destroy a bunch of race cars, and then I somebody on – Twitter earlier today was saying the same thing, but they said, look, for the first time, we can go destroy all the race cars we want because after the, this year, we ain't using them anymore. you got to remember something. You have a quantity limit. <laughs> so, so it doesn't mean just because it, it's going to be, you know, I know, but ready kinda, for the scrapyard. If you tear kinda, them up too yeah. quick, you run out of bullets. No, I know, but it kind of <laughs> takes the sting out of it a little bit. Like, as you know, deeper that we go into the year. It's, uh, un undoubtedly, you've never done a budget on a no, race team, no, and understand no, there, no. there there is no taking away from the from the sting when it happens because no. all of a sudden you look over in this column, which was your crash clause budget, and all of a sudden you realize well, I, I've done used up two bullets and had to pay for them. So even even though you you like the idea of being able to sell them, not just you know <laughs> dispose of them. I have the fun job of getting to spend everybody else's money. I, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I am Kelly has not a fun job to go there. Kelly has a fun job of collecting sheet metal for charity. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you know this year should be really a free for all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody in the charity business is going to be very, very happy at the racetrack. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And and the thing is, 
the one thing I wonder about it, kind of playing devil's advocate a little bit, I mean, it is a small field. And and the nice thing is that I like that we're back to that because it had gotten to the point that it was, you know, it was about the same size field as we had for the all-star race. And it's hard to just, it was hard to distinguish one, you know, the Bush clash from the all-star race. It was, you know, about the same fields when you looked at them, but having an exclusive field, is it giving these guys that are in that race an edge going into the 500 a week later? I I would say yes, because again, it's your first chance to get on track, start drafting, start seeing what everybody's up to in a, in a competitive setting. Um, But the other half of me says that, you know, it seems like the every year, kind of the the luster of that race, at least when it comes to the drivers, has worn off. It's like the drivers, they're only in it because they have to be in it. Um, so, I, again, I look at it as if I'm a, if I'm a team and I know I have to go compete in that race, use that as your quote unquote test session for the Daytona 500. Yeah, obviously it's not the same car, but again, what can you learn in the draft? What are you going to, what can you see about how other drivers may be acting, what they're up to, uh, how fast your race car is, what can you translate to the 500? Um, but again, it just kind of seems like, you know, we go down there and we, we, everybody's excited for a new season, but the drivers are just like, I don't want to do this. (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe that's just me, but it kind of, again, it kind of seems like the, the, I don't, I don't think prestige is the right word to that race, but it kind of just seems like the excitement and everything of, uh, around the drivers, at least they just don't care for it. But with the loss, you know, you, we used to have the preseason thunder at Daytona. Mm-hmm. You go down there and everybody went down there and tested. So you had everybody had an opportunity to be on the track then. Right. Now you've got real limited opportunities for practice before you get on the track for the five, gosh, you know, for the, the duels. And then, you know, so these guys that are in this race are getting valuable practice time that other people aren't getting. No, and I agree with you and that here is the here's the big caveat we don't need to lose sight of. Number one, not only do the drivers need to knock the rust off and kind of get their get, I mean, their communication between their spotters has they haven't talked to one another since November of last year in a competition environment. So you get an opportunity for them to kind of get tuned back up and if you've got a new spotter, you get a chance to get acclimated. And there's a lot of new spotters in there. There are. There are. And and that's that's something that's invaluable for them, for them to be able to start working on that. So this is it's almost like a preseason in any other major league sport. You've only got one, you know, a couple of days to do it, but yet every minute on the racetrack, every minute working the garage area, going through the inspection processes, all you're doing is getting back in that rhythm. I'm big on getting rhythm going so that you have that understanding, that communication, uh, making sure if you got new crew members or new engineers, they get an opportunity to start doing their job in, a, in an environment, a competitive environment. Yeah, you can have meetings all you want to, but you really need that competitive fire and that need and that urgency to make it really be meaningful. And I think this is what the Bush class really gives you, gives you an opportunity to get that done. Again, you pointed out, you get the the experience, but the information that comes back, it will may help you with the 150. Mm-hmm. And that, that's another one of those things. That's the first real race you're going to get an opportunity that's going to mean something. So all these things, it's a build up. Take advantage of it. Be thankful you're in it. And drivers, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then you've got qualifying. But it really, it is qualifying, but it's only qualifying for two people ultimately when you really get right down to it. So there are a lot of guys, uh, yeah. well, yeah, okay. I don't, I don't, it, it I don't, is, I, but it isn't. I don't want to diminish it too much because there's still a few drivers that, I mean, like a Brendan gone. Yeah. For example, you know, he's going to run at Daytona. He's going to run Talladega. And when it comes to a race like this in a qualifying session, this is one of those times that if his car is fast, he's fastest of anybody that's not locked in. It could be very much important to him, especially uh, if something happens in the 150, it might give him an opportunity to run the 500. Otherwise, he'd be bumped out. Yeah, yeah that's fair I, enough. I yeah. would say the qualifying, yeah, everybody is going to make a big deal out of who gets locked in in the front row. But to Jeff's point, for the rest of the field, and especially the, guy, the drivers who don't have charters, that is their chance to see how much work they have to do over the next couple of days to get to the dual races. As uh, Daniel Suarez, I think if you ask him right now, Brett, he is going to be sweating bullets when it mm-hmm. comes to qualifying because he realizes – 
that if he unloads and he's fast and he can put down that yeah. fast lap, he's going to want to do it. I think for those for those teams and drivers, they're going to look at qualifying and say, okay, do I need to spend the next couple of days ahead of the duels working on handling or do I need to work on finding some more speed? Well, and that's what I mean. That first lap is going to yep. tell you, okay, we're, we're – we don't have We're anything. in the ballpark, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. can make a run for, for a fast speed, or mm-hmm. no, we're going to have to get ready to race and not worry about the rest of this stuff. Mm-hmm. All right, it's going to be interesting to see. Well, each week in the Riley Auto Parts Pit Reporters, we give you a chance to go to goprn.com and vote in our poll. And this week's poll question, ask a real simple question. Would you like the year to begin basically with the Daytona 500 instead of the Bush Clash? So should the year begin with the Bush Clash or the Daytona 500? The Clash, the 500. It's that simple. Those are your choices. Last week, we asked you, will Gibbs win half the races again in 2020? And I find this intriguing. 56% said no. 44% said yes. I actually thought the no would be a higher percentage than that. Interesting. Well, but the thing is, the the power that we saw last year, when you really break it down, and I think Kelly's probably more looking at at statistics than probably I am, but I'm pretty bad. When you look (laughs) statistically wise, they should be as good as they were last year. Yeah, I mean, nothing's changed. Yeah, you, you've got to go take it away from them. Yeah. I mean, and that's where we're hoping, at least as far as being on this side of the microphone, you want to have an opportunity that for the Chevrolets to get a little bit better and be able to kind of like, you know, take one away here and Ford get a little better, take another way there and bring that number down. So I think the no's are probably more Chevrolet and Ford fans. Yeah. I would I would say the only thing that's different is – Something we're probably going to talk about in our next segment when it comes to those Chevrolet teams. Yep, absolutely. Maybe Rowdy Nation stuff the battle <laughs> box. <laughs> All right, we will talk about the new Chevys when we come back. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Jesse's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. As a nurse, not making it to work was not an option. But driving through the snow with my wiper blades struggling, I just didn't feel safe. So I pulled into O'Reilly Auto Parts, and before I knew it, an employee was offering to install the wiper blades on my car. I got to stay out of the snow for a moment, and I still made it to work on time. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. NASCAR crashes Las Vegas. Big damage on Kurt Busch's car. February 21st through 23rd. It had a lot of smoke in the cockpit. It's high stakes and insane speed at America's Racing Showplace. He'll pinch Joey Logano to the middle group. Penn's Oil 400 weekend tickets are going fast at LVMS.com or call 800-644-4444. Cash in big and leave Las Vegas a winner. NASCAR's fastest weekend at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Want to hear one of our past shows? Visit GoPRN.com. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Hey, it's Kathy Martindale and Paul Shad on Z-Max Racing Country. We're so proud of bringing you the best singers in country music and the biggest stars in NASCAR. It's Kathy and Brothers Osborne. What would she tell me about you guys? She would probably would normally... tell you that I played a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz. She just thinks it's funny because I'm tall and I'm glad I played the munchkin. <laughs> Z-Max Racing Country. Hi, this is Major General Chuck Swanick. Each year, Speedway Children's Charities partners with hundreds of programs nationwide that help children, from combating pediatric cancer to providing a healthy meal. We help kids wherever and whenever they need us. Through the support of our longtime partners and awesome fans, we have granted more than $55 million helping more than 13 million children in your surrounding communities. Learn more about how you can help a child by visiting us at speedwaycharities.org. Download our free mobile app to listen to the show and more great PRN content on the go. Now back to the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. And hey, welcome back along with Jeff Hammond from Fox Sports, Kelly Crandall from Racer.com, Brett McMillan, glad to have you with us. Sorry, we, we kind of touched on the Chevy. He's got the new Camaro this year. Kelly talked about it. <laughs> she, <laughs> she kind of brought it out. She more brought than it I up, did. but yeah. we'll talk about yeah. it. We got the new Camaro coming out this year. We've seen... Chevy's in the last few years, they have performed well at Daytona. So should we kind of take anything we see at Daytona, Jeff, with a grain of salt and wait till what 
till we see how they perform at Vegas before we start judging what we see with the Chevy? Absolutely. It, Daytona is is an animal in its own right, and that racetrack and the way things evolve and happen, you can't take anything from there. It's just being in the right position at the right time and the right man making the right decision. But now when we leave there and we head west and we go to, to uh, California as well as Las Vegas and then eventually Arizona, we will know more about who's got their act together. Last year was a great indicator of how good and how bad Chevrolet and Ford and everybody else was. So this same thing will go, will come into play now. I mean, I don't think we're going to be able to sit here on this show or any show and accurately say this is where we are until we get through, mark my word, Atlanta. Well, I, I was going to say, I, I think the first, after we get past Daytona, I think we'll be fine because look at the way the schedule lines up this year. You got those three West Coast races. Um, then you get Atlanta. Eventually, mm-hmm. you know, Texas is in there somewhere and Homestead's in there somewhere. I mean, that's the bread and butter of what we're going to be doing this right. year. So we're going to know very early on this season what teams are performing and what teams got have some work to do. So we've seen in recent years, you know, we've talked about, you know, when, when the new Toyota came out, it took it took the Toyotas till about the 600 to really get things figured out. Uh, Ford came out with a new body. You know, and it took them a little while to get it figured out. Can Chevy afford to wait, you know, to have it take until the 600 to figure things out? So it's funny because I was going through stuff the other day, um, some past articles that I had written, because Chad Knauss told me on my podcast, and I wrote it uh, for Racer.com as well, that this Camaro, this car, is significantly different than what they were running last year. And in Chad's words, he doesn't think there's a single component on that race car that's the same. Um, so for people who think who think this is just a nose change, according to Chad Canals, whose word I trust as a seven-time champion, this is a completely different race car. And I think that's going to be very um, significant uh, for these Chevy for the Chevy teams because again, I think we're going to find out right away whether or not they hit it. And what I was saying, what is funny is I was looking back at something where when the original Camaro came out in 2018, you could tell very early on they missed it. And I remember back then talking to crew chiefs and talking to officials from Chevrolet uh, back during one of the Michigan races, touring one of their plants. And they all admitted back then we did not, we essentially did not account for the new inspection system. Because remember, that was the same year NASCAR rolled out what is now the OSS. Right. And, yep. Hawkeye. You know, yeah, well, Hawkeye. So uh, the thing for Chevy now is they didn't have to plan for anything else. They they could change this car. They went ahead and changed their car. And they know what the rules package is. They know what the inspection system is. And again, they didn't just change the nose. They just went for it all and apparently changed a bunch of things. So um, I think very early on we will tell. And... Look, if they can hit it by May, I think they'll be fine. Because as long as you hit it at some point. The problem is the last two years, they didn't hit it at all. So I think as long as they hit it at some point and can get that momentum towards the summer and then going into the playoffs, I think they'll be fine. No, and I'll agree with that. I mean, I think the thing is right now, just don't get too far behind and continue to make sure you work your car into that balance zone that you need. I mean, we knew they could be fast. You go and look, last year, Chevrolet uh, and Ford, I mean, they were all unbelievably fast by themselves. But when it came time to go racing, mm, not so much. I mean, Toyota would qualify, you know, 10th, 12th, 15th, sometimes 20th. But at the end of the day, they were first, second, third, fourth. You know, that was the big difference. The big swing was they could not get their cars to balance and be under their drivers when they needed it the most. And that's when the tires were wearing out and the racetrack was rubbering up. That's what the Camaro could not do in the past. And I think everybody learned enough to know I can only get this for so long. And now I have to change this to keep up. And when I do, I take speed out of the car. And that's the one thing Toyota didn't do. They were able to keep that speed and balance at, on an even keel. Mm-hmm. And so everybody knows where that balance is now. And so I'm pretty sure they're going to be pretty darn good pretty quick when they, when they come out. I mean, and let's also not forget, Chevrolet just opened a new uh, R&D center here in the Charlotte area, all directed at doing what? making their product better, just like Ford did a few years ago, just like TRD has up in Salisbury. So all three manufacturers have got home bases for simulators and a lot of technology to help their organizations be better than what they've ever been. Yeah, Chevy was behind on that. I'm surprised it took them that long to do that. It's real simple. Look at the numbers. When you win all those championships yeah. and you don't have to, then you keep saying, hey, it ain't broke, don't fix it. But all of a sudden it got broke. 
and they scrambled yeah. to get it fixed. That is true. One of the things you were saying, Jeff, about balance is, um, so Kurt Busch said at the banquet in Nashville that the thing with the new Camaro from what he, what he has seen, the numbers he has seen, and all the tests and whatever they've done with it is that this Camaro will be better with side force. It'll be better with down force. Just f- from all of the simulation and stuff that, that he understands has been done with it. He said the numbers have, have matched whatever it is they're seeking. So there's a lot of folks, you know, from Chevy teams, crew chiefs and drivers that are very optimistic about it. And again, I think we'll find out very early on whether or not they got it right this time. Well, and how much does it help Chevy when you get into the, into the playoffs that, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you know, your playoff tracks are now Martinsville, Bristol, the Roval, Talladega, uh, you know, it's not all, you know, it's not half of them aren't mile and a half it's like it used to be. You've got a lot of these tracks that aren't necessarily aero sensitive. Well, see, that's where I'll disagree with you. We we have always tried to contend. Oh, Bristol's not an aero track. <laughs> Richmond's not an aero track. Neither is Martinsville. But today, the way these race cars are, they're so sensitive, they will take it, take advantage of whatever you give them. And that little bit is very important and very critical when you're trying to make forward bike. You know, and that's that's the other thing is that there is there is a trade off. No matter who you are, or what you are, you got to be careful not to overlook it. And I think that's really where Chevrolet is right now. They missed it so bad that it, even though they were able to pull some out, I mean, let's face it, you know, um, they missed it so bad they're changing the car a year ahead of when they're gonna have to get a completely new race car anyway. Yeah, yeah. they did. They they they, they said enough is enough. <laughs> right. We got to stop the bleeding at least for one year, no matter right. what it takes before we get to the next round. Yeah. Uh, that's a pretty big undertaking, but when you see somebody like Chase Elliott hit it right at the Roval, that's how dangerous they can be. So they know they got good drivers, and I think more importantly, I think they're also realizing that we don't want Jimmy Johnson having to drive something that he can't be competitive in in his final year in NASCAR because he's been such an icon and such a, a champion. We owe it to him to bring something that he can be proud of. I, I think it goes back to – you know, Jeff correcting me in the sense of, look, they were so good for so long, they didn't need that tech center, right? Well, they were so good for so long with these cars, and and then they changed it, and then we'll eventually got to change it again. I, I think the wake-up call was they haven't had a Chevy driver in the Final Four since 2016. Bingo. I'm telling you right now, Mr. Perkins is him up there. Because you can win all the races you want with Chase Elliott during the regular I mean, season. Mr. I said Perkins. Mr. Campbell. Jim Campbell. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can win – you know, six races over the last two years with Chase Elliott, you can win the all-star race with Kyle Larson and, you know, take home that million dollars. But when you don't have a car represented in the championship four in the last three years, that's embarrassing. Well, even more so when you look at their number number of, of manufacturer wins mm-hmm. and they're not even in contention to challenge for that. Yeah. They haven't won a manufacturer championship since I think that same season, if not, Sometimes I think how many, before how many in a row did they win? Yeah. Oh gosh, twenty like something. Yeah. something. Like it was unreal. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole problem was they felt like, hey, we got this figured out. I mean, we're we're good. We're good. Just everybody just relax. Yeah. It, you know, when they catch up with us, we'll worry about doing something. Well, they, they didn't catch up. They went by you. Yep. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk about the new Hall of Fame class that was inducted last week. Get uh, Kelly and Jeff's thoughts to so stay with us. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Then call Page Publishing ASAP. We're looking for authors of all types of books. And unlike most publishers, Page Publishing will take the time to review each and every book submitted to us. And we'll give you our feedback. And if we like what we read, we will get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, the Apple iTunes Store, Barnes & Noble, and other outlets. We handle everything. Editing, cover design, copyright protection, printing, publicity, and distribution. So if you've written a novel, children's book, cookbook, inspirational work, poetry, or a biography and want to get it published, call Page Publishing now for your free author submission kit. Your road to fame and fortune could very well start with this simple phone call. 800-296-1294. 800-296-1294. 800-296-1294. Once again, that's 800-296-1294. We've got more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters in a moment. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network.
Get your NASCAR fix with PRN's Garage Pass. Now more than ever, the teamwork aspect has is, is really come into play. Like everyone seems to really be committed to each other. That's really changed the game a lot. You get guys that try to go run around in the back and then they get taken out before the end anyway. So um, there's, there's definitely nowhere to hide. For us, as a race team, I'm not good at right around the back. It's not me. I can't do it. Hi, I'm Mark Garrow, tracking the latest racing news every weekday. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge to treat everyone with respect. Respect and dignity. I will not tolerate discrimination or harassment of any kind. I will speak up. Speak up whenever I know discrimination is happening. And I will stand up. Get up. Rise up. For victims. Take the pledge at risetowin.org. Get your short track racing fix with PRNs at the track. Visit goprn.com. Now, more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. Hey, welcome back. Along with Kelly Crandall from Racer.com and Jeff Hammond from Fox Sports. Brett McMillan, glad to have you with us. All right, uh, last week, we had five new members into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and it was the Joe Gibbs Fest for a while, as you had the coach was inducted, along with Bobby Labonte and Tony Stewart, both of whom, of course, who drove for the coach, won championships for Gibbs. And then also Buddy Baker and Waddell Wilson. And uh, as you watch the ceremony, kind of your thoughts on that, uh, Kelly? Well, it, was, it did. It felt very much like the Joe Gibbs Racing Show. And, and that's to be expected when you have three of the same team going in. So I kind of felt a little bad for Waddell, got, got a little overshadowed. But I, I probably, I, I say that, but that's probably only to like a younger generation that only knows Joe Gibbs Racing. I'm sure the, the older generation... Uh, was very happy for Waddell. I, I know a few people who were very, very happy for Waddell and gave him a lot of, gave him his due and a lot of attention. But watching that, you can tell that it was, um, especially when it came to Tony Stewart, it was a lot about Tony. Uh, the tone was, was, you know, what's Tony going to do? What's Tony going to say? Um, he was almost tame. Yeah, well, I like it what, was televised. I, like the, I did like the Labonte brothers. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that, that was pretty was cool. Good. Yeah, that that's was pretty good. cool. No, but you, you bring up the fact that, you know, number one, I was really happy for Buddy Baker because people don't know Buddy like some of us do. Oh, yeah. Um, he was a great person. He was a fantastic race car driver, and he was just so funny, so down to earth. I mean, somebody that, that could be that big, and when he started talking, it's like, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, t- just, I, told, I told, told folks last week on the show, I said, if you've never heard the story about was it Smoky Mountain Speedway, you need to you need to go to YouTube, put Buddy Baker Smoky Mountain Speedway, and listen to the story. It's great. I laugh every time I hear exactly. it. Exactly, it's one of the he's one of those kind of guys, and I'm I'm happy he was able to get yeah. in because he is a connection, a direct connection to the to the history of our sport because he grew up in it. His daddy was you know, was one of the pioneers, Buck. And uh, I think that was really well done. But you mentioned Waddell. I've worked with Waddell several times, and I've competed against Waddell. Um, very smart man, very dedicated to this sport. And he and the France family go way back. And I think that's um, also something that a lot of people don't realize. He was very influential and in kind of guiding uh, both Big Bill and Bill, Bill Jr., in a lot of the some decisions that were being made and he's been very well respected you know throughout nascar for many many years but he's done a lot for so many race car drivers when you look at his career 109 wins you know as an engine builder 22 as a crew chief i mean that's pretty much you know that's uncharted territory i know it, it seems like people say it every year but i really felt like since this class was announced that this was a fully loaded class just uh oh, definitely just, just from top to bottom the accomplishments and what they've done for the sport i mean however way you want to break it down i since this class was announced last year i was like that is a stacked and very impressive class and, and i agree with you 100 percent on that kelly because you know what did they say when they first started with the uh, hall of fame is what contributions have you made to the sport not always the numbers but what kind of contributions what have you done behind the scene to help better the sport and this entire group has done that. 
from top to bottom, whether it's winning races or giving opportunities and continue to give opportunities and give back to the sport from, you know, Bobby Labonte, not only being a great champion, he grew up in the sport, Terry, the same way he came in as a mechanic, made his way into Billy Hagan's car and, and the rest of it was history. Joe Gibbs. I mean, here's a football guy that wanted to become a NASCAR guy. And he, you know, he went in, you know, all the way. So it's like, I love the fact that there's a lot of background stories here without just talking about wins and championships. I mean, it was the heart. That's why I'm saying the heart of these guys and the passion they have. I mean, it just, it oozes out each out of each, every one of them. It was cool seeing Joe Gibbs at the ceremony Friday night in Charlotte being inducted into the NASCAR hall of fame. And then on Sunday, he's on the sidelines at the Super Bowl being recognized as one of the top hundred people in NFL history. I mean, that tells you what an unbelievable career he's had in two different disciplines, and he's in the Hall of Fame, two different disciplines. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, and again, just a very deserving class. Yeah. Very deserving class, but, you know, you talk about the quality of man of Joe Gibbs. I mean, it's not just football. It's not just racing. It's his philosophy on life and religion and everything like that. He is he is really a class individual. Mm -hmm. He really does. And All right. Very good. We're, we're talking about the Hall of Fame. You know, we've been pushing for your nomination to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> But we I, can start I think, that campaign. No, we can't. I think he's just put a, put started the clock again on the th the three year hold because you're going back to work as a crew chief. Well, you're going to you be know, doing eight truck races this year. Well, congratulations on the job, first well, of all. Well, I'm very excited. But you started the clock again. No, you? no, 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 no. See, if you don't compete in the full season, it don't it shouldn't count. It's almost like being running for the rookie of the year. You know, you can only run so many races and you can still qualify the next year for the rookie of the year as long as you don't exceed that limit. Uh -huh. So. That's what I'm kind of leaning on and hoping on. I, I, I look, I'm I'm more worried about going to Daytona and not making a fool out of myself right now than than worrying about the Hall of Fame. I mean, I, I I'm flattered that people mention me in that kind of vein, but I'm really excited about getting an opportunity to go back and and work here with uh, Clay Greenfield on that number sixty eight Rackley uh, Toyota. I think we're going to have uh, I think we're going to turn a few heads. We got a, we got a pretty good piece going to Daytona, and I'm excited about that. I, you know, I admire you for doing it, first of all, because I know it's your passion, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. But it's also going to give you a continuing, you know, you, obviously you participate here, you're on Sirius XM, you're, you're on Fox, and it gives you a chance to keep your hand in and keep current in the sport by being aware of what's going on. You know, I'm, I'm kind of glad you brought that up because, believe it or not, since we made this, made this deal, I have been doing a little bit of everything from getting, you know, pit crews lined up to getting parts gathered up from transmissions to springs to whatever. I've been up to TRD doing different things up there, getting to know those folks. A lot of other parts facilities around the Charlotte and Mooresville area, getting to go back in there and, and talk to some of the parts people. And, and it's, it's, been, it's been refreshing to a certain degree to kind of like be back in the flow and you're talking racing with these guys uh, from Tom Buzzy up at Buzzy, you know, rear and gear and transmission uh, to going to Charlie Lewandowski's place, Tulu up there in Mooresville, the drag strip. I mean, it's it's fun. And the cool thing about it is I just really have just gotten back, you know, from Nashville working on the truck this past weekend. But drove up there, you know, worked some long hours, maybe kind of get back in the groove. I mean, for 10, 11, 12 hours a day <laughs> uh, going to – Clay's house and sitting down and watching videotape and talking about um, the races and what did I see from my vantage point. So it's um, it's been refreshing and been re-energizing. You know, Kelly will criticize you if you blow a call. Look, look. I mean, I've, I've been told on how much, and I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. Fair no, game. Don't decide, Fair game. For that. <laughs> hey, I was going to say, game. man. Fair game. You know, if you, I don't. That was the one thing in talking to some other folks. That they said. <laughs> Hammond, all you got to do, just manage. Just don't mess it up. Yeah. So uh, I might just do a lot of monkey see, monkey do for a while, <laughs> not try to be creative. That Hammond thinking it's the 90s again, what is he doing? Can't make that call. <laughs> <laughs> so you already got me this, you already got me your stereotype, right? I'm actually proud of myself. I thought about that one on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> just make sure you know all the current rules, okay? Because apparently look, some of the look, crew chiefs don't always I, know them. I've got news for you. Have you looked at a rule book lately? Uh, I, I can't glance what at one What is it, like year. seven volumes now? So, maybe more than that. I put it this way. They can't put it. They can't print it. It has to be on a computer. All I know is there's a line in there that says, and all of this can be amended if we want. E-I-R-I. Yeah. 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 Subject to change. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Except in rare instances, this rule book is accurate. All right. <laughs>
Well, congratulations. We Thank look you. forward to watching you in the truck series, of course, and, and having you around here as well. When we come back, time for our gas and go. Stay with us. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Sarah's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. Driving cross country with two young children is ambitious, to say the least. Then our check engine light came on. We pulled into O'Reilly Auto Parts and they tested it. Turned out it was a faulty sensor. They referred us to a great mechanic just down the street, and we were back on the road in no time. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. You wash the outside, clean the inside, and make sure maintenance is up to date. Pamper your car's engine and fuel system by adding Z-Max Micro Lubricant. Using the fluids as a carrier to reach internal parts, Z-Max literally soaks into metal, dispersing harmful carbon buildup. This helps improve performance, extend engine life, and reduce emissions. Get Z-Max today at ZMAX.com or your local auto parts store. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Blue Emu. No chill, no burn, no odor. Blue Emu works fast and you won't stink. More of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters in a moment. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Hear from the drivers and personalities of grassroots racing each week on PRN's At The Track. We cover the short tracks, dirt tracks, legends, and current racing from the World of Outlaws, Lucas Oil Series, All-Star Circuit of Champions, USAC, Cars Tour, Pass, Ultimate Super Late Model Series, Fast Track, Neesmith, Power Eye, and more. That's PRN's At The Track every week on broadcast radio, the free PRN app, and iTunes. Kathy Martindale and Paul Shad on Z-Max Racing Country Classics. I go back a long time listening to Charlie Pride. I grew up in Sledge, Mississippi, right below Memphis. I started singing in clubs, and Red Sabine and Red Foley came there for a show, and they said, you like to do some songs on the show? I said, yes, yeah. so I did. Tons of country music this weekend on Racing Country Classics. Z-Max Racing Country Classics. Get your straight line racing news with PRN's Nitro Notes, presented by Wix Filters. Visit goprn.com. Now, more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. It's O Rewards Bonus Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Stop by today for store wide savings. Plus, you can earn double points on all sale items. Sign up today online or in store and take advantage of Bonus Points Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Day. Kelly Crandall's here. Jeff Hammond's here. Time for our gas and go. All right, Kelly, they have announced that the Pennzoil 150 will be the name of the Xfinity race at the Brickyard. It will be 62 laps on the 14 turn road course. Said uh, Matt Benedetto tested two configurations. He liked the longer one. Yeah, if you're, look, if you're going to bring excitement back to that track with NASCAR's there, especially with the Xfinity series, that was the way to do it. No, yep. I, I agree 100. percent I think they they picked the right guy to go up there and do the test. I think he gave the thumbs up. I'm ready for it. All right, Jeff. They have announced that uh, ticket holders for the All Star Race will get pit passes with those tickets. Well, buy your tickets quick and soon because again, that's a great opportunity to go down, rub elbows with your favorite drivers and superstars. I like it. For it, when it comes to fan experience, that is going to be an experience. So take advantage of it. Yep. All right, Kelly, uh, Kurt Busch has announced KB100 Plus, which is the ticket giveaway that he did last year. 100 tickets for military members at every single racetrack, and he's wanting to expand it and get some other parties involved to give more than 100 tickets away to each race. Pretty cool deal. Yeah, he did this last year, and it was a huge hit, and I appreciate any driver who can look outside of racing and what they have going on in their life to do something for other people. Well, what I love about it is with the military, Anything you can do for the military, he's got my big thumbs up. I'm excited for him and all those who get to come as his guest. Well, apparently, Christopher Bell has decided to honeymoon in Daytona. He got married last weekend to his fiance Morgan. Really? He couldn't have done that a couple weeks ago? Jeff? No comment. <laughs> I ain't going there. Nope. I ain't getting my dog in that fight. 
Kelly, would you like to comment? Well, listen, when you race as much as he does, it doesn't leave many weekends available. So you're going to have to do it at some point. And finally, a Kyle Bush has launched a new energy drink like he needs a boost. Uh, Rowdy Energy, now available. I'm very interested to see how this venture goes because you just don't think of energy drinks being that successful. But if anybody can change that, it's Kyle Bush. Why not? I mean, everybody else has been trying to make it happen and everybody's trying to get a piece of that Red Bull action or the Monster Energy action. Why not Rowdy? Does it come in flavors like M&M's? I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I I think I saw there's like three or four different flavors. So I tried two of them last week. I didn't like them, but I'm sure some people will. Did you put anything in it to kind of like sweeten it? Oh, no, it's plenty sweet enough. At least I thought it was. I thought it was I think really what I was talking sweet. talking about she's kind of <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah, I, I was keeping that one. She's uh, being a good girl. Yep, yep. All right. Hey, before we take a break, I want to take a minute and offer our condolences and best wishes and prayers to the family of John Andretti. Uh, lost him that last week. What a great guy. Uh, wonderful human being. Uh, lost his battle to cancer, which had been going on for quite some time. Had a chance to work with John on the air a couple times at the Brickyard and uh, just as nice a guy as you could possibly have very giving uh very genuine and uh we are certainly going to miss john and uh, i know that uh, you guys both knew john as well Kelly? well i will mostly defer to jeff for this because i never got the chance to meet john i've i watched his career from afar but i enjoyed seeing somebody who smiled as much as he did and i've loved hearing over the years how friendly he was and just what a good guy he was and um so I, I will take that, and uh, anytime it's it's something cancer-related with uh, what has happened to family members uh, that I've had, it always it always hurts. So it, it hurts when it, you hear somebody as a good a guy as he is, but I'll mostly defer to Jeff. No, you, you, you're right, exactly right. Everything you heard about him, that, w- that was a fact. I mean, that was the main thing is that he was such a great guy, and he, he loved the race. I mean, no matter whether it was open wheel or it was stock cars, he had a passion for it. Uh, obviously, the Andretti name, you know, is synonymous when it comes to motorsports, and he represented it well on both on both uh, venues, especially. But the key thing is the type of person he really was, and his family. And John, you were a heck of a fighter, buddy. And rest in peace. All right. When we come back, we'll take a look at 2020 ahead and uh, see what these guys think the biggest stories are going to be. Stay with us. Do you use the expensive blue or yellow pills to charge your sex life? Are you thinking about it? What if we can promise you the same results for less than $3 a pill? If you're paying $20 a pill for the other pills, you're getting taken to the cleaners. Our pills deliver the exact same results for less than $3. You'll save more than $16 a pill for the same results. And right now, radio callers will get 44 blue or yellow pills for $120 with free discreet shipping. You can save more than $700 off pharmacy prices. Charge your sex life now and save a ton of money. Call now and get your 44 pills and save over $700 and qualify for free shipping. Stop overpaying and call right now. 800-605-1682. 800-605-1682. 800-605-1682. That's 800-605-1682. There's more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters still to come. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. History at the Magic Mile. Somebody's going to have to give here. They stay 3-1. Here comes Harvick. He gets to the back. Pepper of Kyle Busch on turn two. Now they go side by side down the back stretch. Here come Kevin Harvick. Celebrate New Hampshire Motor Speedway's 30th anniversary. Tickets start at $35. Parking is free. New England's longest tailgate. Your only chance to see the NASCAR stars in your backyard. July 17th to the 19th. You ask, we listen. Atlanta Motor Speedway celebrates its 60th anniversary in 2020 with a new spring race date, March 13th through the 15th, with new and enhanced camping and fan amenities, all backed by the perfect weather guarantee. Get two races for the price of one with the Xfinity Series and Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series doubleheader on Saturday. Tickets for Sunday's Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 start at just $39. Plus, kids are only $10. Online at AtlantaMotorSpeedway.com.
Download our free mobile app to listen to the show and more great PRN content on the go. Now back to the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. Hey, welcome back along with Jeff Hammond from Fox Sports, Kelly Crandall from Racer.com, Brett McMillan, glad to have you with us. And as we look forward to 2020 getting underway this week, what do you think the biggest stories are going to be, Jeff? Or what are you going to be looking for? I'm really looking to see how much the change in the schedule affects everybody. I mean, because a lot of people say, well, what's the big deal? You, you run races, you run the same number of races on the same racetracks. But when you take things out of sequence from time to time, it kind of throws, and again, I use that term rhythm, it throws your rhythm off of what you're kind of used to doing and your planning. And I think the other thing is I want to tie that into the fact that these guys are now got a limit on the number of cars and how they allocate what they decide they're going to keep, what they're not going to use and everything like that. I'm just going to see how that kind of works out. Kelly, what are you looking for? So I, I split it in two ways. When it comes to looking at 2020, I, I agree with Jeff. I'm going to look at the schedule, especially when it comes to the back end of the schedule, because I think the summer races and the push towards the playoffs, especially in the Cup Series, lines up. It really lines up well and lines up for some great racing and for some great storylines because you have – um, Daytona setting the playoff field as the regular season finale. Now you have Darlington in the playoffs. You have Bristol in the playoffs. You have Martinsville, the final cutoff race, which uh, I was telling somebody the other day, they were, they were you know, saying, oh, I don't know how I feel about Martinsville. Uh, and I said, that is the race to go to because if that race has been bananas the last couple of years as the first race in that third round, as the last race, it's going to be even crazier. And then, of course, you look at Phoenix. How is that going to go as the championship finale? And then my second part of that for 2020 is Jimmy Johnson. What is How, does, how do we send off Jimmy Johnson, a seven-time champion, in his final season? The second half of how I split that is, okay, then you start looking at what is coming. Next-gen the 21 schedule, all these drivers in contract years. And, again, you, you have to focus on 2020. Thank you. I was going to say, <laughs> remember what the question uh, was? <laughs> I know, but you, but but I, I don't think it can be understated how big this year is going to be because of what is coming. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a balancing act of – it's kind of like the race teams, and I've asked a few of them. It's a balancing act of focusing on your job for 2020, but knowing that that, that – especially the next gen car is coming and not putting that off too much because then you might oh, fall behind. But you're not going to do that because you got to realize that's what some of these teams have already done. They split their yeah. race team and or their developmental group and they're over there working while these guys over here yeah. racing. So, so from, there's something still yeah. going on. So from a media perspective, that's how I'm approaching the year is mm -hmm. focusing on making sure telling the stories of 2020, but also not fa falling behind on looking at big picture stuff and what's to come. Because I really think 21 and beyond. Can I is say important. something back to Kelly? I want to ask sure. you a question. Go. You said how we send Jimmy Johnson out. Yeah. It ain't up to us. It's up to Jimmy. Jimmy needs to send Jimmy out. And that's my that's my challenge to him, and I I think that's he's up point. for it. Yeah. I think he's up for it. I think how he handles it, how he races that race car, provided he's given a race car he can race, I think Jimmy Johnson will set his own epitaph to a certain degree, or farewell. But I understand what I understand what Kelly's saying, oh, yeah. talking about you know like all these drivers on one year contracts. Yes, it's a twenty. It's ultimately a twenty twenty one story, but it's going to come to fruition yeah, they're, they're, in twenty. This is the last half of the season. Mm -hmm. These guys are going to be having to answer questions about what do you, you know, this becomes the distraction for 2020. There's a lot yeah. of things that are going to happen in 2020 that is setting up 21, 22, 23. And whether I mean, it's the 48 is the big domino, right? whether it's driver contracts, whether again, whether it's next gen, that 21 schedule, I don't think can be understated enough because, you know, depending on who you ask, there's not going to be any change. And then you ask somebody else and they think it's going to be significantly different. So there's a lot of things that are happening this year that are that are setting the sport up for what it's going to look like going into the next five. I, I'd say. I agree. I mean, I think everything you're saying is dead on target. I really do. I believe it's one of the situations right now where we can't sit here and and look in our fortune telling <laughs> glass or whatever ball fortune ball and tell everybody all the stuff that we're expecting to happen here. So it's like to me. I'm going to take one race at a time and, and look a little little ahead, but not real too far ahead because yeah. I think you got to live in the moment to make sure you don't wind up getting yourself in trouble. Well, but when you look at it, I mean, ultimately, 
Yeah, crystal ball <laughs> I was looking for. Thank you very much. Crystal, there you go. Yeah. I don't have one. You guys it's pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it's full of smoke. <laughs> there you go. But you know, but when you look at this year ahead, I mean, you know, it's still going to be 36 races. But I think the intriguing one is going to be like the double hitter Pocono. Because mm-hmm. that's that's a huge test. Just it, it's a test to see can this work? And can it work elsewhere if it works at Pocono? I'll counter with that and, and just say this. We've been doing this for a long time. We just haven't done it with the Cup Series to this degree. Because if you go back to the original 1985 when we ran the original Winston, we ran a Cup race on Saturday. And Turan came right back on Sunday and ran the Coca-Cola 600. So it's not like these teams can't handle something like this. And NASCAR the other way. I mean, so it's really, I think it's whatever the promoter, in this case right here, Pocono, what they make out of it. And I think they're off to a good start. And I think the folks up there will rally and come in there and they will, it will be a out, unbelievable crowd, you know, Saturday and Sunday. All they need is mother nature and the man above to give them good weather for the number of races they got set for the weekend. Mm-hmm. I think if po- that's a good point because I think for Pocono, that's going to bring a lot more eyeball balls back to that race because, you know, some people would argue, oh, Pocono is just not that exciting. Well, now you're doing something different or at least different from what we've seen in quite a while. So for po- for the good thing for Pocono is they're getting that attention this year. They're bringing eyeballs back on their races. They're probably going to put some more uh, s- s- uh, fans in the grandstands. I think they've opened up more camping. Um, so I'm excited for them to see how it goes. And to be honest with you, if it goes well, I think you'll see other places looking around of maybe it's something we try. Because from what I understand you're not necessarily losing any money. You're still holding your two races. You're just doing it in one weekend. So if it works at Pocono, you know, how soon until we start hearing that, you know, X track here or X track there that, you know, I've already heard grumblings about could be next. Well, you're probably saving money because all the cost that goes into having the highway patrol and concession, I mean, obviously a lot of concessions are volunteers, but I mean, it's, you know, all the, all the periphery stuff that goes into a race weekend. You don't have to double up. You, you're not so doubling I, it. I saw some of the folks from Pocono the other night at the uh, NMPA convention, and we briefly touched on it as, as something I want to further dig into later in the year. But I said, you know, how different is this going to be, you know, in terms of manpower and stuff like that? And they said it's not because you're still staffing like you would. You're just running another race. I mean, it's still going to be, you know, you're still going to have your, your security. You're still going to have this, this, and this you're just have one extra thing on the racetrack. So it's really not, again, it's not that different. That's what I'm trying to say is that when you look at a lot of these racetracks, especially like at Daytona, we had speed weeks at one time, we ran a lot of races at, mm-hmm. during speed weeks at Daytona. And so these racetracks are used to having races, whether it's a Saturday race, whether it's Xfinity, or if it's a truck race or if it's an ARCA race, this is not something uncommon for the tracks to have to deal with. Yeah. But when you start backing them up with multiple races on one day, that's a little bit of a challenge, but but we've already it's just experienced a longer it. day. It's just a longer day. You're exactly right. Yeah. So it, it's 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 not something they haven't already had a little bit of experience with, but to this degree, we got everybody knowing that it was coming. Sometimes it was a surprise, <laughs> you know, like a rain out or something. So it it will be interesting. And to your point, I think it's going to be energizing to see that we can pull two races off. And one weekend, and ha- you know, have them count back to back, and see how the teams. I think the teams are going to be challenged morning by the. You know, you want to know what the best part and the most intriguing part of Pocono is going to be? Inverts. Oh yeah. Who plays the strategy game for the second race? Yep, I'm I'm mid pack, so I'll just back it all up mm-hmm. the rest of the way. Mm-hmm. It's going to be interesting. And yep. Let's let's hope that they don't wish they had lights. <laughs> White flag laps ahead. <laughs> At O'Reilly Auto Parts, we'll make your auto repair, maintenance, and restoration projects easier. So when your car isn't stopping like it used to, our professional parts people will help you find the brake parts and supplies you need to do the job right the first time. Now through February 25th, get 15% off a set of brake vest pads and two rotors. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. 
We want to help extend the life of your vehicle. Add Z-Max Micro Lubricant to the fuel and oil where it uses the fluids to reach internal parts. As it soaks into metal, Z-Max disperses harmful carbon buildup to help improve performance, reduce emissions, extend engine life, and increase fuel mileage. Buy Z-Max today at ZMAX.com or your local auto parts store. Help your vehicle run better with Z-Max Micro Lubricant. Want to hear one of our past shows? Visit GoPRN.com. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. The fans are on their feet, the lights are flashing, and we're ready for green. Side by side, fight for the race lead. To the bottom of the racetrack, goes Brad Kozowski. The crowd is roaring. Chase Elliott is in the lead. Four wide out of turn number four, but they're behind Kevin Harvick. Elliott locks up the tires, and he noses into the tire barriers. It is a three-way battle for the lead, coming back to the stripe at the white line. We've got three cars spinning off turn two. Brad Kozlowski has caught Kyle Busch right on his back bumper as they head into turn number three. Hamlin spins, hits the inside wall. Daniel Suarez slides out into the infield grass. Here comes Elliott. He's all over the bumper of Harvick. Now he'll go to the outside. From hero to zero and back to hero. Rack him up into pool room in Dawsonville. Here comes Chase Elliott. When the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series races in Atlanta, Las Vegas, Bristol, Texas, Charlotte, Kentucky, New Hampshire, and Sonoma, you hear it here on PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Get your short track racing fix with PRNs at the track. Visit GoPRN.com. Now, more of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. Hey, welcome back. Time for our white flag laps. And first up from Racer.com, Kelly Crandall. Thank you. So the last time I joined the show, I'm pretty sure I passionately pleaded for NASCAR to take a look at the short track package this year. And I'm glad to be back and that they have done that so I can applaud them. So... As I kind of mentioned a minute ago, I think this season is going to be important for so many reasons going forward, not just 2020. And making sure that this season as, is as good as it can be is vital. So we aren't going to lack storylines. We're not going to lack drama. We know that. So let's get to it now with the racing. And let's get to it with better racing, especially on the short tracks. So I just want to put a period on that. I like Very it. Very well done. Very well done. Next up for Fox Sports, Jeff Hammond. Well, for me, I think I'm going to focus in on Jimmy Johnson. I think the fact that we know that this is Jimmy's farewell tour, the fact that he is only one of two other gentlemen who've ever won seven championships here in NASCAR, and how he goes out and how he's perceived in his final season, I think is very important to a lot of us. You know, whether you love him or whether you hate him, you got to respect him because he got it done when it mattered the most. He's been a great uh, ambassador as well as a champion of our sport. So I'm just hoping that he's able to go out on a competitive winning note. It doesn't have to have a championship tied with it, but if it does, hey, that would be very, very sweet, number eight. I like it, and uh, just a great guy, too. Mm -hmm. People that don't know him, just yeah, fantastic guy. Well, with all the talk about the 2021 car, you could look at 2020, as we've kind of talked about, as a gap year. But there will still be trophies awarded and checks cashed, and someone will earn a championship that will count just the same as all the previous ones. We should also expect a lot of drama this year. I mean, we go into the year with a lot of questions that have to be answered. Can Jimmy Johnson add a record eighth title to his career accomplishments, or can he just win another race or two more and climb the fourth in the all-time standings? Will the new Chevy Camaro be competitive? Can Joe Gibbs Racing come close to repeating their 2019 year when they won more than half the races? Can someone else join Johnson and Kyle Busch as multi-time champions or does Rowdy Nation celebrate again? How will the highly acclaimed rookies do? Will the Pocono Doubleheader signal a new era or be a one and done? Those are only some of the questions that we have now. More will come, as will the answers. And it starts this week. It'll be interesting to see. So you think, real quickly, Johnson, does he does he win at least one more race or the championship? One race. At least one. I'm with her. He's going to win. All right. Going to be fun watching. And it all starts this week at Daytona with the Bush Clash. I love having that name back. All right, Kelly, Jeff, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you next week in the Riley Auto Parts Pit Reporters.
The O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters was presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts, your professional parts people. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network.